When we use XLOOKUP, it's usually to find an exact match, like looking up a name associated with a social security number, or looking up the details of a laptop associated with a specific serial number. But sometimes you're not looking for an exact match, like here, where I need to calculate the bonus percent associated with the revenue figure in B2. This is the XLOOKUP formula in B3. The default match mode for XLOOKUP is exact match. And because the number in B2 can't be found in the lookup range of D2 to D22, the formula returns an NA. That has a knock-on impact on the formula in B4, which is multiplying B2 by B3. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use XLOOKUP when the item that you're looking for doesn't actually exist in the list. Rather than start from scratch, I've already entered an XLOOKUP into B3. But as I said, because I've not specified the match mode, it defaults to an exact match. In XLOOKUP, there are five match modes, but I'm only going to cover two of them in this video. And these are exact match or next smaller item and exact match or next larger item. So how do we know which to use? In this example, it will be exact match or next smaller item. And this is because if the revenue does match exactly one of the values in column D, we want it to select the associated bonus from column E. That's the exact match part. But if the revenue in B3 doesn't match one of the values in column D, instead of displaying NA, we want it to select the next lowest value from column D and use that as the lookup value. In other words, the revenue is 99,000. 99,000 doesn't exist in column D. Working backwards from 99,000, the first value in column D that is lower than 99,000 is 80,000. So it uses 80,000 as the lookup value and therefore returns 9% as the bonus percent. If the revenue in B2 was 265,000, the same principle will apply. It will use 260,000 as the lookup value and return 23% as the bonus. In order to make that happen, I need to edit the formula. So I'll double click on B3, add a comma after the third argument. The fourth argument, if not found, we don't want to specify a value for that argument, but we do need to specify a value for the match mode, which is the fifth argument. So we actually type two commas and then select exact match or next smaller item. Notice that each option has a number associated with it. The number associated with exact match or next smaller item is minus one. So I can either type minus one into the formula or I can double click exact match or next smaller item and it puts minus one into the formula. The reason for the two commas, by the way, is that you need a comma to separate each argument in the function and although we're not specifying a value for the if not found argument, we still need a comma. Otherwise, Excel will think minus one is the fourth argument and not the fifth. So if I press enter, we can now see that it's picked up 23%, which is the bonus associated with 260,000, which is the next lowest value after 265,000. So that's the exact match or next smaller item. What about exact match or next larger item? This spreadsheet is used by the packing team at a company that sells bottled drinks and they need to know what size box to use. And that's based on the number of bottles purchased. In C4, I've used this formula. It's looking for the value in C3, the number of bottles purchased, is looking for that value in column F. And if it finds the value, we want it to return into C4 the corresponding box size. But if it can't find an exact match, we want it to return the next largest value. Why the next largest and not the next smallest? Well, the customer has ordered 50 bottles. At the moment, 
the fifth argument is minus one. It can't find 50 in column F. So it selects the first value it finds that's lower than 50, which is 48. And that's why it's returned D as the answer. The problem is box size D can only hold 48 bottles. We need a box that's bigger than the number of bottles the customer's bought. So if I edit the formula, change the minus one to one and press enter, it now looks for the next highest value after 50, which is 60 and uses that as the lookup value. Well, I hope the video helped you out. And if it did, please give it a thumbs up. If you want more Excel tips and tricks, check out my website at theexceltrainer.co.uk. As always, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video, but until then, have an excellent day.